am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now what was interesting that uh, I had no idea what the conference was going to be about this past weekend. Uh, you know, in his presence conference, it's like you know, they don't announce it. And we got there only to discover that the three messages were about one word, gospel. That was what the conference was about, all right? And so uh, I am filled, full today, thinking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I just want to say that the greatest privilege of my life has been to proclaim this gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm so honored that he was called me to proclaim this gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want you to understand something today, that you are called to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? You are a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How many of you say, I know Jesus, I know the Lord, I know Jesus? Listen, then you are commissioned, you have the authority of the Holy Spirit, you're to be, you're to be a burning and a shining light, you're to be salt, you're to go out and tell the world about Jesus Christ, all right? So this is not just about pastors right? Amy, this is what happens in Walmart. This is what happens uh, at your neighbor's house. This is what happens. And so uh, the gospel is good news, right? How many think it's good news? It's happy news, great news. And uh, one of the things that one of the brothers said there that I'd never really thought too much of before, uh, he referred to Revelation chapter 14 and verse number 6, and he talked about how the gospel is everlasting, it's eternal. It's the eternal gospel. And what that tells us is that God did, you know, did not set the world in motion and, and then, oh no, sin came in and, and he had to scramble quick and, and think, oh no, now what am I going to do? Oh, I've got a good idea. I'll send my son down there to be the sacrifice. How many of you know that was not an afterthought? It was, the, the gospel is eternal. It was a forth, before thought. It was the plan of God all along. If it's the everlasting gospel, as it says in Revelation 14, 6, then God had this plan all along. And you say, well, why would God plan that? I'll tell you why. Because the gospel brings glory to God. When somebody gives their life to Jesus Christ and they're truly changed and they, they go in a different path than they were going in, let me tell you something, that brings glory to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. And so it's for His glory alone. Amen. So let me just begin reading today out of Romans 1 and verse 16. And it says this, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of of God for salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Uh, I'll tell you that the gospel is for everybody. It's for everyone. The scripture says, whosoever will may come, right? Amen. Whoever wants to come can come. Whoever decides, I'm going to believe and trust the gospel, they can come and find the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that the gospel is the only hope for humanity. Right? How many of you believe that? Other religions cannot help the fallen state of humanity because only God can change the human heart. Other philosophies will not bring peace or hope to the world because man's wisdom has no lasting effect. Come on. Man's intelligence with all of their psychology and all of their invented drugs and all of the things that they give away to people, you know, it can, it can numb you. It, it can maybe uh, make you walk a little different than you walk. But let me tell you something. It cannot change your heart. Only God God is the heart changer. Come on. Jesus said this. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no other name is given among heaven whereby men can be saved except the name of Jesus. If you believe he's the only way, can you just give the Lord praise in this house today? Amen. Amen. And you know, it doesn't take a genius to look around the world and see we need the gospel. Am I right? 
Just watch the evening news. Discover who's been arrested in a 15-mile radius of the house where you live in. Amen? Just talk to psychiatrists and psychologists about all that people tell them that's going on in their lives. Sit down with a school counselor and ask, how are the children doing? How are the junior hires doing? How are the middle schoolers doing? Come on. Go into the home of someone who's addicted and broken and, or going through the prisons. I'm just telling you today that there's only one hope for the world and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want to give you some statements today about the gospel, all right? You can follow along in your notes or on the screen today. And uh, uh, these are just simple statements about the gospel. First of all, we must preach the true gospel. Now, when I say we, I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about us. We have to preach the true gospel. How many of you believe that? We've got to preach the true gospel. And it's amazing how many people don't really understand the gospel. Well, just give me a moment to explain the gospel today. The true gospel is the good news. And how many know it's good news? We've got to give it in a happy way, right? It's good news that God saves sinners, right? Man is by nature sinful and separated from God. And you know, we cannot save ourselves. There's no remedy that we can bring ourselves. But God loves us so much that by His own power, He provided the means of our salvation, the means of our redemption, and the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? The gospel is truly good news. But to understand that it's good news, first of all, we've got to understand the bad news, all right? And the bad news is this, that as a result of Adam and Eve in the garden, as a result of the fall of man in the garden, every single part of man, his mind, his will, his emotions, his flesh, it's all been corrupted by sin. And the Bible tells us that that God, that, that, that man's sin dooms him to an eternity in hell separated from God. If you read the scripture, if you read the last part of the book of Revelation, you'll read about that. It, it, and I'll tell you something, that's some really bad news. But here's the good news. Are you ready for good news today? Amen. The good news is uh, th that there is a remedy. Hallelujah. There's a way that we can come to God. And God in His mercy has provided us that remedy and that's the person of Jesus Christ he came he died upon the cross for you and me he became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him and when you believe the gospel when you put your faith in Jesus Christ there's an exchange that takes place it's a spiritual exchange you want to know what he does he takes all of your sins every every failure every bit of your past and he takes it and he puts it in the sea of God's forgetfulness and he wipes it out. Isn't that good news? Come on. And then what he does, he takes that from us and we exchange our, our burdens, our brokenness, our sinfulness and he gives us his righteousness. Come on. We become the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Come on. Amen. It's a beautiful thing. He doesn't just fix us up. He makes us all brand new, right? Amen. He doesn't just do a remodel job. He completely regenerates us, right? He makes us brand new. And, and, and it's not only that we, that we were able to escape hell, right? We are now, according to the Word of God, given a completely new nature with a changed heart and a new desire, a new will, a new attitude. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm just grateful for the gospel. It's my only hope. It's my only hope. Amen. I love the gospel. And the second statement is this today. Number two, 